Okay, so suppose you have this sort of molecule here and you're reacting it in light. Uh, we talked a little bit about theory-wise what we did last time. So what you're going to do is you're going to say there's two double bonds. That means there's two bonding orbitals and two anti-bonding molecular orbitals. So this is the MO diagram here. Um, you know that typically it would look like this, except this time we're dealing with light, which means that one of those electrons gets promoted up to the next level. So now we're looking at this as our HOMO. Um, we also know that we're going to be alternating between symmetric and anti-symmetric. So what we're really looking at is a symmetric HOMO. That's all we care about right now. Um, that's going to look like this. And if we orient this molecule so that it's facing us like this, I could basically put my thumbs out so that it's like this. We know from here that to close this ring, we're going to need the movement to look like this. So one will move inward and the other will move inward. That means that this is moving counterclockwise and this is moving clockwise. Okay? So remember that. One is going to be moving counterclockwise, one is going to be moving clockwise. So if we have these groups oriented like this, both out, one of my hands needs to move counterclockwise, and the other one needs to move clockwise. So in the final product, both of our, I guess, groups are going to be facing up. So I'm going to put up, up. Alright, then all we need to do is draw the mechanism. So this will move out like this, and this will move over like this. So what we get is a four-membered ring. This double bond is going to be in the back, and both of these are going to be on a wedge. Equivalently, you could probably also draw the dash dash. Um, that's fine too. Okay? So, let's try another problem. I'm going. I know it's pretty far away. Um, unfortunately, it's the only way I could get both my hands in the shot at once. I know I'm drawing these molecules pretty poorly, so just bear with it. Alright, so what you should do is pause the video and give this one a try on your own. Alright, I'm going to assume you pause the video. So the first thing we do is we draw the MO diagram. Again, you have three double bonds, which means you're going to have six orbitals total. You're going to have three bonding orbitals and three anti-bonding orbitals. We're going to put the six electrons in. Since it's heat this time, we don't need to bump one up to the next energy level like we did over here. Um, S A S. So again, we know it's going to be a homo and it's going to be symmetric. So same thing as last time. You're going to need to close the ring by moving one of these guys in and the other one of these guys in. So this is going to be counterclockwise. This is going to be clockwise. Um, we have our groups facing like this. This one's going to the right. This one's going to the right. So one needs to go counterclockwise and the other needs to go clockwise. So this will be going up and this will be going down in the product. So I'm going to say, down, up, down, up. All right, now we draw the mechanism. This will move in, form the new bond. This will move over, this will move over. So we're going to get a six-membered ring. This time, two double bonds over here. And this one was going down, and this one was going up. Again, you could have the down, up product. That's, that's fine, too. All right, once again, let's look at another one. So this is what I was talking about in the theory video about being an exception. So here we have this molecule here. It'll be like, all right, what do I do with this? Um, I'm going to be reacting in heat. So what's the product? Well, this is the exception. The first thing you want to do, um, well, I'll just tell you what it is. Uh, thermal ring closing of four membered ring is forbidden by sterics. So this one is going to be the no reaction. Um, just know it. It's fine if you do it with light, you just can't do it with heat. Okay, so just write that down in your notes somewhere and don't forget it. Um, otherwise you'll lose several points on an exam, when it comes up on the final, you'll be like, alright, well, great. Okay, so, what's the next one I want to look at? Let's look at this one. Alright, so pretty similar to the other ones. You'll see that once you practice these, they're really not that bad. 
Alright, so this one is going like this, and this one's going like this. First we want to react it in heat, then we want to react it in light. So pause the video and give this a try. Okay, so the first part is going to be identical to what we did here. So I'm going to put that right over here. Then what you need to do is you need to figure out how this reverse reaction is going to happen, so that ring opening. Um, we've been practicing ring closings, we haven't really looked at the ring opening, but they're the exact same thing. You know that this had um, six bonding orbitals, well sorry, six molecular orbitals, three bonding, three antibonding. You still knew that there were uh, six electrons in the system. Since it's light, we're going to promote one up to the next level. That means that we have an anti-symmetric HOMO. So if we're looking at this here, now we need, this is going to be anti-symmetric. Remember these um, shaded sections need to meet up. So right now my hands are like this. To get them to meet up like this, I am going to need to move one clockwise and the other one clockwise. This time we're going to be doing the exact opposite though. I know that both need to move clockwise, but I need to start with the product since we're opening the ring. So this is going to be downward facing, this is going to be upward facing. I know to close this, it had to be um, both clockwise. So this will move clockwise, and this will move clockwise. So I'm going to get out and out. So now I just simply need to draw the product. So opening the ring is the exact same ring pushing mechanism that you do for closing the ring, just in reverse. So this will move here, this will move here, and then we're going to break this sigma bond and move this here. So we're going to get something that looks pretty similar to what we had over there. So this time they're out and out, okay? So this is your product for this. Okay, let's practice even more. Say we have this. So what they love to do is give you molecules that can undergo this reaction, but they're not in the conformation that you need. So it's kind of tricky to put them in that conformation. So practice this one. Pause the video and give it a shot. Okay, so the way to handle this one is know how to do a bond rotation. So if you're going to rotate this bond and this bond over here, um, know that this is going to be the plane about which you rotate it and you're pretty much you're just going to reflect it across here so this will be over here and this will be over here so if I redraw that down here with those two bond rotations in there what I get is that and that you could tell if you orient it like this it's out and out okay they're going to do the ring closing now we know we have those six molecular orbitals. We know that when we put the six electrons in there, this is going to be your symmetric HOMO. Um, so if I orient it so that we're actually looking at it like this, it's symmetric. I have my thumbs out like this. I need to close the ring like this. So one of them needs to move counterclockwise and one of them needs to move clockwise. So if they're both out, one of them needs to move counterclockwise, one of them needs to move clockwise. The final product is going to have both of them either um, wedge wedge or dash dash. So I'm going to draw the mechanism now. This goes here, this goes here, this goes here. Um, it's going to look like this. I'll draw it wedge wedge. Sorry, dash dash. Again, doesn't doesn't matter. Um, let's see. What should we do next? I guess we could practice the, the opening a bit more because that's a little more complicated. All right, so I'll give you another opening problem. So this is, looks terrible, but. All right, so pause the video and give it a shot. Okay, so you knew um, when this original product is here, if we draw the mechanism on this, um, this will move here, this will move here, this will move here, this will move here. What you originally had was, uh, this is going to be really hard to draw. Uh, 
Double bond here, double bond here. Double bond here, and a double bond here. So you know you had four double bonds. We just don't know if something's going to go out or in over here. We have something we need to figure out what these groups are going to do. But we know we had four double bonds, which means we had a total of eight molecular orbitals. One, two, three, four. Okay. And we knew that half of them were filled. And we know that since it's light, we have to promote one electron from this up to here. S, A, S, A, S. We know it's a symmetric homo. So if we look over here, we knew that for the ring to close, it had to move in like this. One going counterclockwise, one going clockwise. Um, we have them both dashes right now, so if we move one, it gets difficult. So move this one counterclockwise, so out, and move this one clockwise, which is going to be out. So it's either going to be in, in, or out, out. Yeah, make sure <laughs> make sure you remember which way the, the clock goes, so that, that, that helps a bunch. So the final product will have both of them out, or both of them in. Sorry for the, the, the small amount of hesitation there. Okay, so bonus question. This one's a little more complicated. So say we have this molecule here, and we have this molecule here, and we're reacting this in heat. So pause the video and give this one a try. Okay, so this one's interesting because it's two reactions in one. So if we take this, and we do the ring opening mechanism on it. Remember, heat, you can't close a ring, but a four-membered ring, but you can open a four-membered ring, that's fine. Let's do the mechanism on that. What we get is this. We knew there are two double bonds, so there are four bonding, well, there are four MOs. We knew that it was an anti-symmetric homo, so we know to form the ring, this had to move like this, this had to move like this, so both clockwise. Um, that's sort of where it tells you what the answer is here, but if we have one on a wedge, one on a dash, and they both move clockwise, it's going to be both in or both out. I'm going to go with the outs. And now, what you could see is that this reaction happening in heat, you have a diene and a dienophile. So what we'll actually do here is the Diels alder reaction after this ring has been opened. Um, there's already a video for Diels alder so I won't actually draw the product here, but you'd practice it at home and see what you get.